I'll call this regular board meeting to order for USD 350. Welcome to all visitors and future board members. Thanks for being here. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? Yeah, we need to add four items. Uh, student accident insurance, uh, track maintenance, and budget authority motion, and uh, destruction of records all under Section C. Oh, I move we um, add those listed items to the agenda. Second motion. We move and second to approve <laughs> the additions and changes to the agenda as stated. Any further discussion? All in favor, right hand. 4-0. Oh. Um, consent agenda. You have meetings from two minutes, the May 6th regular meeting and May 14th special meeting. The bills and budget report. Uh, bills, you have a, since uh, you received the packet, the, uh, the yellow sheets are the new bills that were not in your packet. And then uh, the activity fund report as well. Mr. President, I mean, if we uh, approve the gosh, I forgot the consent agenda. consent agenda as presented. Thank you. Second. Sorry. They move and second to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? All in favor, right hand. <coughs> Opposed, same sign. 4 0. Uh, patron comments. If they wish to make comments. Okay. We'll move on to the first business item then. Uh, first business item, life after school program report. Okay, I'm going to turn the floor over to Laura Davis. She's uh, our director for the after school program. Uh, she's done a fantastic job with this program, getting it off and running on a very short notice and uh, taking a lot of ownership in the program. So, Ms. Okay. Davis, won't you? You want me to stand? Or you do what you wish. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, we started the program on March 4th and ended on May 21st. Uh, within that time, we served um, 49 days of programming. And uh, during that time, we served 969 times for students. At the end of May, our enrollment was at 49 students. Uh, we're currently working on our summer program, which starts next Monday and runs through um, July 12th. And we're also uh, preparing plans for fall for startup again. What types of um, activities or what are some of the examples of what they're doing? Okay, what we did this spring. Yeah. Um, we had Kids of Cooking with the Extension Office. We partnered with the Rep Commission to skate. Of course, academic activities. Uh, we did some service learning projects, which involved Le Leisure Homestead May Day Baskets. And most recently, we did some presentations at the Lucille Hall Museum on several of the, of the exhibits they had on Jubilee Day. And you and I have been talking about plans for next year um, with our middle school <coughs> kids doing some um, entrepreneurship types of activities throughout the year and um, just kind of trying to expand some of the opportunities for that middle level group. How about uh, curriculum wise, uh, increasing student achievement? What do we do we need along to make, those lines? Yeah, it's in the grant. We need to make sure. Um, March to May was a good experience as far as learning protocol and how we needed to do operations and um, what we do with our fluctuating number of students and how to manage that. Uh, what we need to be doing next year is making sure that every day that we're hitting academics. Um, we had some days that I called them, you know, rainbows and unicorns. Skating, had more kids attend that day. Um, they figured out that skating was on Thursdays. Um, that was our available day. So hopefully we can keep those kids coming some other days than just the days that are the rainbows and unicorns. So um, just making sure that we're getting at the reading and getting math, um, different activities. We have some program things every day at the end of the day for 45 minutes that we do. Uh, we try and hit the target groups on grades uh, for a fun game, that, but it's, it's math. They just sometimes don't know it. So, different things, always trying to get them to read. Some are a little resistant, but 
just trying to make it fun at the same time learn. Are you having a lot of luck with volunteers and teachers um, and really needing help in that area? Not really yet. Um, however, though, that is one thing that we need to work on from now until uh, this time next year. We need to have 20 volunteers come and help within the program. Um, I think we'll focus mainly on uh, getting different expertise out in the community. We'll either go to them or they'll come to us um, and setting up different units for kids. Are there certain like objectives that you're <laughs> looking to meet with those? I mean, like certain uh, career, topic, career type? exploration, okay. um, <clears throat> scientific <coughs> stuff if that's available, um, just anything that is of an educational nature, informative for the kids, uh, that helps them to uh, to expand, expand their knowledge of what's out there for them to do. And that sounds like that kind of ties with what I saw going on at Jubilee um, with the alumni interview. Yes, yes. Um, Kathleen Clark with the high school, and I haven't gotten to visit with her very much about that, is doing interviews, and she's going to record those interviews of St. John High School graduates and what they have gone on to do to help share with the high school career exploration lab. So real life application and examples that those kids can look at. Did she, did, well, did she speak to you about, I know, I know, I was going to ask and then I thought, well, maybe she But I had ideas of places that, you know, people we could, could ask to come. Yeah, and, and, give an interview. Um, and she was in the, the museum when I was there and, and we were talking about, you know, a fine example of some gentlemen from our area that are there at the museum um, that we presented on. We're good examples of just what you can go do. Some examples here that probably <coughs> my, my example that Brian likes to talk about is the the genetic testing that we do on cattle and, and you know there's some science with that that yeah, and maybe everyone doesn't know is I would a say career option. Several people mind. don't. I don't even know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought really. <laughs> <laughs> I told him to come in and give an interview at some point. That that okay. Prepare for questions, because that may involve some interesting ones. Well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome to come visit the program anytime, too. All right. Uh, <coughs> to item number two, district insurance package. <coughs> Included in your packet on page 15 and 16 is the um, spreadsheet you're probably used to seeing over the years from fee insurance, <coughs> our property and uh, liability and vehicle insurance is through uh, Employers Mutual, EMC. This list, the coverage amounts and the premium compared to last year. Uh, they're trying to raise our exposure, our property values by quite a bit, uh, saying we're underinsured. Uh, you know, just on short notice, it's tough to evaluate that, whether we're underinsured or not. So I asked them to back those way, way down, so it's more of a 3% increase in, in values as opposed to what they had before us, which still means a couple thousand in, in a premium difference. Um, and our general liability, our crime coverage, uh, some employees are required to be bonded by state statute. This covers that uh, rather than a surety bond, it's, it's through insurance. Uh, Inland Marine, uh, you can see it covers various things. Uh, equipment that may not be covered otherwise, like the mower, our business auto, <clears throat> and shifting some of those vehicles, uh, and the increase in premiums there, umbrella liability. Uh, errors and omissions covers this board uh, and uh, officers of the district uh, for errors or uh, 
mistakes and when we take action that prevent that uh, protects this board and individual board members from liability. And then the workers' compensation, we were dropped by Hartford, our current uh, insurer. And we've had high claims over the last three years. What is the nature of the injuries? Uh, various. I mean, there's not really anything that, any pattern there that to prevent, um, uh, you know, an elbow injury, uh, shoulder injury, a back injury. Uh, you know, over the last three years, there's been uh, a handful, but uh, nothing in particular. Um, so along that, uh, those lines, um, Brad, our insurance agent, bid that out <coughs> with several different companies. Uh, EMC, which provides our coverage for property and vehicles and everything else, uh, would take it, but we have to have a $500 deductible, which would be per injury. So there will be a little bit of cost there, but uh, looking at that, uh, that's our only option is to do that with the deductible. They won't insure us without the deductible. We did bid it through KASB. They have a workers' compensation uh, fund. Uh, they couldn't compete with those numbers there. So mm -hmm. these are our best options. So along the workers' compensation, uh, you know, how do we prevent some of those losses and manage our risk? Um, for a bigger district, we might have uh, somebody who manages the risk for us in the district office, but of course we're not that, that size. So, uh, establishing policy with return to work, uh, you know, after an injury, we don't really have anything set in policy. Uh, some of those things will help. Uh, just a lot of what Julianne and I learned from the questions they're asking us when getting these, uh, getting that bid from KSB will help addressing so some of those issues. How long someone <clears throat> is out? Yeah, it, yeah, and when they can return to work and how and what's required. And, and there's a handful of other things that, that policies they ask about that no, we don't have that. Um, things that would help. But it won't make an immediate difference. You know, it's really the claims that make the difference. But. Mm -hmm. So that's a significant increase in our workers' compensation. Okay. Is there any, are, are claims processed through the, the school before they are processed by whatever health provider, you know? So yeah, if there's an accident on the them. job, they're required to be reported to the district office. And Julianne uh, reports them to the insurance company directly, right? Yeah. And then from there, it's worked out with the medical provider, claim. right? If I have bills come in, then I will forward them to the company, but they handle all of the claims. Is there a reason someone would choose to? process a workman's comp claim as opposed to going directly, I mean, having regular insurance cover the costs of, of treatment? Well, if it's an on-the-job injury, then it is workers' comp. And that's state that's, law. That's the, that's the primary insurance coverage if it's an on-the-job injury. Your normal health insurance will not cover an on-the-job injury. I've been through that before. Yeah. An employee fell coming in the building and broke their thumb. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to do the workman's comp thing. There's no choice you can do it. Mm -hmm. So this is like a danger. I mean, you know what I mean? Places that have mechanical equipment and a lot of injuries put things on the wall that, you know, 500 days since an on the job injury. We don't live, we don't have a dangerous place. I mean, just. Right. Why? Foods, well, and it's not, it, you know, we have custodial, you know, lifting and... Mm -hmm. uh, this coach is on the job also. Coaches and uh, 
uh, food service, you know, the lifting daily. You know? So it's not just the, the teaching. You know? It would be repetition of doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. could, could be an issue. I see. Okay. Is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I can, I can assure you this is the best, <laughs> the best we've got. And, I, and it took some time to get there. <laughs> I'd entertain a motion to approve the insurance package. Uh, Mr. President, I'm the board approve the insurance package as presented. Second. We've been moving second to approve the insurance package as presented. Any further discussion? All in favor, right hand. Opposed, same sign. For a my left hand is free. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I got you sure. <laughs> All right, move on to item number three. And that is scoreboards. I put this on the uh, agenda as an item of discussion for some direction from the board on, the, on this issue. Our, our football scoreboard, I've, I've updated you some on our uh, Friday notes. They, it wasn't really something I had on the list to. Uh, to take care of immediately, um, but that football scoreboard is in, in need of some attention. And I visited with uh, two banks in town and asked about the possibility of um, you know, chipping in some money for uh, to help us pay for that. Uh, you can see I was a little bit concerned because I got this quote back in October uh, just to see how much we'd be looking at. And uh, for both the football and basketball scoreboards, it's uh, Twenty-five thousand. That doesn't include labor and installation. So we're looking at probably thirty thousand dollars. So back to the the banks. I approached them to see if there was an interest in uh, providing some funds, uh, and in exchange for uh, you know an advertisement, a sign. And, uh, uh, St. John National is willing to pay half of that, um, and American State Bank. They just don't have it in their budget to come up with that kind of cash. They'd like to help as they can, but um, it's probably not to the level it needs to be to, to have their own advertisement on there. But, uh, so I guess the question is, uh, can we afford to pay for half of it? Uh, we hadn't planned on it, we didn't budget for it. Um, we could try to raise other funds, but that would take time. Um, our capital outlay budget, we have about uh, between moving the rooms and carpeting and uh, updating technology and those things we discussed, uh, maybe it was two months ago. Uh, we're looking at about 150000 um, that some of that will be expensed out of this year's budget and some of that will be expensed out of next year's budget. Uh, we're looking to maintain our cash reserve at the level it was at the start of this year. So that being said, getting through the summer with all the projects we want to take care of, that leaves us at about 50000 left in the budget for next year uh, to finish out everything. Uh, if we would need to replace one of the old Suburbans uh, or the old Suburban or something like that, that would eat up that pretty quick. Um, so. Uh, we had discussed earlier about our bond and interest fund. Uh, that mill levy is coming off next year. That's about five mills this year. We won't have that next year. Uh, and we've increased the authority of our capital and mill levy to eight. So we could raise that up to eight and not theoretically not see a, an increase in overall mill levy. So if there's... Uh, potential to increase that capital outlay mill levy. Uh, that makes it very easy to afford something like that. Uh, with, without doing that, uh, I think we need to take our time and make sure this fits within our budget. Is it, is it mill would invest in anything? That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Approaching the fireman. I'm in favor of doing it for maybe 
keep our expenses around five and five thousand and raise the rest. I, I think football definitely football sport before it ought to be done if possible. So it's ready to go for a season. It's just like neighborhood. If you don't keep it up and make it look nice, boy, I think you take it's kind of an eyesore up there too. So consensus is to It'd be, you know, be nice if we could raise a little more. My, my, my thought is, uh, is there anything wrong with um, inquiring with the flour mill, for example? No. Kansas for, is another one. For of one, one of uh, yeah. those places and then find out what they're willing to do and mm -hmm. then I'll think about it. Yeah. yeah. I agree. It's a ball field. One probably would be a wise thing to do yeah. this year if uh, you know if we knew the one bank wanted to do that and then basically have three school boards one in right <coughs> one on each end of the basketball court and the football field mm -hmm. divide that by three and have three major contributors maybe. Mm -hmm. to How long will it take them to put the football one in? I mean, I don't they know. have to know. I don't know. I would have to get a formal bid and uh, bid on the labor. And, you know, we're cutting it close to try to get anything done this year, even if we made the decision today. What are you going to do with the old one? <laughs> I have got that far. <laughs> Well, Hudson can always use the scoreboard. I don't know if the football one would work for a ball field or not. I know. I'd have to look at the numbers. But <clears throat> yeah, there might be some, I don't know mm -hmm. how many ways you want to divide the advertising, but I can think of some other businesses that might have the scope of advertising budget that they routinely spend. You know, Marmy Ford comes to mind. It's not that mm -hmm. just strictly in this district, but they certainly have a customer base here. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Don uh, Hildebrand said, you know, they're willing to help, and he's willing to help personally. And it's not that; it's just that level of funding isn't in the budget. So there's, I'm sure, there's willingness to help out. But deciding how we uh, the advertising part is. Uh, Do we need to? Bring a motion to the table, or do we need to suggest how we want to proceed on this? Yeah, really, just uh, yeah, the direction for me to how to proceed, which I think what I'm hearing is find more donors. And, yeah, less out of our pocket. We can. Uh, yeah. where, where is uh, getting hot water to the other part of the building over here on the list of capital outlay expenses? It's in, in that summer list. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't remember. Yeah. I thought that was our number one priority. Oh, what's that? Uh, my question, <coughs> does that have anything to do with the school board? No, no, okay. but it was, well, you, you could raise the mills to pay for the scoreboards or get rid of hot water, warm water. I like uh, the idea of using funding, uh, donation funding to do the athletic stuff versus using our mill levies and funding that comes in that way to do the academic mm -hmm. portion of the building. That's advertising. I mean, it's real visible stuff, you know, that you can do. You can present I would advertising. Say that we could give you direction to if the funding is obtained uh, through uh, donations that you could proceed with it. And I don't know if somebody wants to make a motion that way. He doesn't have to stop and uh, call us up for well, the next meeting. If, in, you know, if you're doing the gym, the Lions Club has a part mm -hmm. in some of what they're wanting to spend some money on there. Okay. We've, we 
we talked about it right. At the Lions Club. I just want to do the TV. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> I, so, I would make the motion that uh, if the superintendent can come up with the funding to purchase the three scoreboards and assorted other things to go with it, that he can go ahead and get that purchase. You're talking about scoreboards and the installation, mm -hmm. not yes. But. Do we want to certain? If, <coughs> do I want to add, add to that that if people get secured first for the football field to do that and then not stop if he doesn't have enough for the basketball? Does that make sense? Okay. Second motion. I move and second to uh, give the subject the uh, okay to uh, seek donations to pay for uh, scoreboards. And should he get the football funding secured, he can proceed to it. Other one. Is there any dis further discussion? So, do we, is there a special price break if we do it all at the same time? You guys see that 5% loyalty know. discount? I, I don't know. Uh, I haven't pursued it that far. Okay. So maybe so no. maybe it'll kick in a little bit if we order it all. And yeah. It'll help too. Um, hey, any other discussion? All in favor, any hand? Or I told you I had to do it <laughs> All right. I give you good enough direction? Yeah. All right, student handbooks. Um, highlighted are the changes <clears throat> in your packet there. Um, this is a technically board policy, <coughs> which is why the entire thing is included here. So. Um, I'd just leave it open for questions. Um, Andrea, if you had anything specific to add about yours. I really just very minor okay. changes, kind of cleaning up a few things, adding, um, a, you know, a few things we talked about throughout the year. Um, I, yeah, I'm happy to take questions. <coughs> Nothing that I would consider anyway major. Putting some policy behind some things that you were already doing. So. And Mr. President, uh, I made the board approves uh, student handbooks as presented to the board. Second. I have moved and seconded to approve the student handbooks as presented. Any further discussion? Thanks for taking the time to review that anyway and uh, make the changes. Oh, you're welcome. And thanks to Mr. Meyer. He, he went over it as well. I appreciate it. Those that. aren't the most easy things to go through sometimes to mm -hmm. comb through. Okay, motion to approve that. All in favor, any hand? Opposing sign. <coughs> Four of them. Five. Wrestling cooperative agreement. <laughs> Uh, last meeting we mentioned briefly about the possibility of a uh, cooperative agreement with the neighboring school district for wrestling. A parent had approached me about that possibility. Um, Keisha uh, Activities Association rules don't allow for more than one, more than two school districts to cooperate uh, or more than two schools to enter a cooperative agreement. So uh, Stafford already co-ops with Fairfield for wrestling, that's not an option, so it would have to be another school uh, if that were uh, what we wanted to do. So I'm just seeking input from this board if this is something we want to pursue, uh, not needing a decision on it today. Uh, I haven't approached any other school about this yet. Uh, uh, so 
I guess that's what I'm asking for is if you think I should go ahead and uh, pursue that with another school, uh, the decision would, would be made in a formal motion uh, in another meeting. Uh, September 1st, I believe, is the deadline for winter sports cooperative agreements, so it would have to be before then if that were the way uh, we were going to go. Uh, providing opportunities for kids, I, I think, is the positive. The transportation situation opens us up for liability. That would provide transportation for every other sport, but even though we're co-oping with another school district, uh, that could be seen as a liability if we're not providing transportation for that sport as well. I don't know how they did it several years ago. The kids drive themselves. Do you remember? You had kids that age? Then for what? Wrestling. Wrestling Stafford. over at Stafford. Mm. I think they that drove themselves provided. over there. That was school provided. Did we take a bus over there? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Offhand, I'm not too in favor of having to go that far to do it if it's not 11 miles. Mm. Oh, yeah, Fairfield. Uh, yeah, you had to go to Max for Fred, 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 wrestling. No. So it'd be Robert I agree with them. Great man. Lauren, Lauren. I'm not in favor. I mean, it'd be nice to involve kids into another sport, but it's an added experience. Mm -hmm. I'd be in favor if we took away a sport. I think, I think sometimes we get ourselves so thin on, I, I like opportunities mm -hmm. for children, but I think in our smaller districts that you can keep adding things and it just becomes expense, 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 and you've got to cut expenses somehow. So if you take something away, you can add it. So. I can also make the argument that we offer a fairly wide way array of sports. It's maybe the alternatives to sports that we have fewer alternatives for student activities, you know, so, that, you know, we don't offer debate and forensics, to my knowledge, for example, you know, if we were going to add something, maybe some of those types of opportunities would be a priority. I guess that's that's a no. Okay. No. All right. Uh, added agenda items. Um, student accident insurance. Um, this was one uh, surprise to me um, in looking at our premium for our student insurance services. We pay an awful lot uh, for this insurance. Uh, I'm not saying that's good or bad. It's something that we've done for a lot of years. We've worked with this company for for 20 years. Um, this is our, our premium uh, quote that was given to me. Um, and I knew we paid quite a bit, and this is a significant increase, uh, you know, a few thousand dollars. Uh, this insurance that we provide would be for uh, any injury of, of a student at school uh, during a school activity. And it uh, doesn't provide full coverage, but there is coverage there. Um, it's not something we have to provide. Uh, the student's health insurance would be the primary uh, insurance provider. So if, if a student has health insurance that covers a particular injury, uh, that's, that's what kicks in first. This would help cover deductible expenses, things like that. Um, but we're not required to provide this at all. Uh, some, some schools would provide just the, uh, let me show you this. Uh, bear with me for one second. Here's an example of coverage that's provided. Uh, from the Activities Association, if students in junior high and high school are involved with a Activities Association-sponsored activity, uh, catastrophic 
injuries are covered above twenty-five thousand uh, dollars. Um, a lot of uh, insurance companies may cap out at ten thousand, so there's some um, there's some gap there between that ten thousand and twenty-five thousand. A lot of school districts cover that mid-catastrophic uh, injury range, uh, and then a lot of other school districts provide that from zero to ten thousand. We have what they call the broad coverage, um, and what's shown here is the standard <coughs> coverage. This is a, a second quote that uh, was given to me. This would just be reduced uh, coverage, uh, lower limits on what the, uh, what the company would pay for injuries, uh, would pay 80% for some injuries instead of 100% of, of, of certain costs. So there's ways we can reduce this. Um, I'm working on other quotes uh, to see, but this would, uh, if we did not do this, I think for our, for our kids and parents, it would be like, you know, we'd be pulling the rug out from under them. So it's got, I think there's, there's got to be a discussion about it. How much uh, are, are students using the insurance? Um, Is it used quite a bit? Yes, quite a bit. Yeah. And we have higher claims than most. And we also provide more coverage than most uh, school districts. Is it broken down to the type of people that are using it? Uh, yes. I don't feel comfortable. Well, is it a substitute yeah, sure sure for family health insurance? I guess is maybe one way of. I don't know that I would. It, it, it can be in some instances, yes. But it, it's just yeah. your injury stuff. But and if you don't have it, family yes. health insurance, is this serving at, to, to fill that need? I guess is what. I'm Partially for accidents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If, if a family does not have health insurance, this would help cover some of those costs. <laughs> I've, I've read what the percentage is. I, do you remember? On uh, how much it covers, what percent of your bill for a broken leg or Yeah, that that's in, in your packet here at yeah. the uh, I just don't remember. Yeah. yeah, it's listed here as an example for surgical operations. 80% of the charges up to $2,000. So it spells out all those things. And so it gets pretty complicated. I've got another quote from another company that's you know $4,500 compared to $17,000. But I don't know that we're comparing apples to apples. But so <laughs> um, the, the direction I guess I'm looking for is should I pursue other options, even if that means reducing coverage? Danny, you're a coach. What do you think? It's, it's, um, <clears throat> I tell you, it's really nice because then if, if you have kids that are less fortunate and they don't have good insurance, you still know that they're going to go get go. checked out and properly taken care of because they know that they have this. Or there's always a possibility some kid won't play because true. you don't want that exposure of... But what I'm talking happen. about is you could have a parent that says, oh, he's fine, he can play. <laughs> and they don't go and get looked at because they don't have health insurance or whatever. And, you know, as a coach, what do you do there? You know, it's tough. What I'm hearing is that we may still be able to have that base coverage, but not at the quite the level. There's that we are. there's uh, anywhere from having no coverage up to having what we have. Uh, it doesn't get a lot better than what we're offering now, um, and it, it's a philosophical discussion as well as you know economical. I mean, it's uh, what do we want to provide for our kids and uh, what. Uh, what level of coverage do we do we feel we need to provide? What is the what's our last year's rate? What, what do we pay for a premium? 
About, uh, just under 15. So that second quote uh, that you have up there is how much, 11? Yeah. And there's any any number of ways to go about this. I, I mean, any it's not just no coverage or the 11 or the 17. It's anything in between. We can, you know, it can be a situation where parents have uh, the opportunity to pay $100 for their own accident insurance through the same company, uh, which some school districts do that. They would provide maybe that $10,000 to $25,000 coverage. And if parents need that other coverage, they can purchase that. We'd still have families that can't or won't purchase it. And that's, again, part of that philosophical discussion. I mean, the health care is not going to get any better. Well, we know that. Yeah. So there's well, probably going to be a lot more families. Theoretically, uh, everybody will have health care. Yeah. But it's so. not going to be any better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they'll all be covered. You might have a piece of paper and say that. And, and, and honestly, it may be, it, there may come a time where we don't, in a year, we don't have this at all because uh, families are already required to be covered. I'm in favor of keeping yeah. what we've got. The increase was 2000 Yeah. To stay where I know are. people who've taken have uh, used this and appreciated that the school had it. But insurance at a level of $11,000 or the premium wouldn't provide that same opportunity to go and check and just have some treatment. Cap on it. Just have you can still cap. do it, just has a lower cap, right? No, I don't know. I think it's more of their initial visit may cost them more. Out of pocket? Yeah. But it, it's, it, was ni it was nice to uh, pick up all of the surgery costs and physical therapy for quite a few months. You know, there's a cap on how many visits the physical therapy will pay, you know, part of, and until it's not there and you wanted it, then you'll miss it, or you know, that if you've been able to use it, you sure appreciate it. Yeah, I've got no doubt. Yeah, it, it makes a difference. And it is used, I see the numbers. And the philosophical part of that argument, in addition to taking care of folks, is you know, we're, we're providing in insurance coverage for, for families. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, I'm saying that's the situation we're in. So. Do we want to do we have a motion on this or is this just discussion? Uh, I was going to get other quotes, but if uh, oh, that, that's, well. that's the, I guess, the discussion here uh, is uh, should I pursue other options or is it the direction of this board that we need to keep what we have and I'm in not between, consider others? I'm in between. I mean, I could be persuaded either way. I, I always look to to say more dollars, but I'm a conservative, very, very conservative. But also, on the other hand, if you think of, stop and think about it, the $2,000 you spend may save how many patrons are in the community, thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So we may be in turn providing a, a really, really good benefit. You guys want to wait till next month, or what do you want to do, Barb? Well, it might not hurt to check and see if you have the time to do that. I won't be a voting member next month. Yeah, so, so it's either now I'm or never. I'm open for you. to the opinion of 
Americans in the audience to chime in? <laughs> I, I, I think I'm along with Stan. I think that there's too many people that just in our community. Well, I'm, I'm going to make a motion unless, you know, it's going to be a 2 2 tie. I guess we can't discuss that at the moment. Okay. Um, I, <laughs> I mean, I, our well, children did never use it. But what does the future I think there's a lot board of members do, so. think about it? Can I ask that question? Do whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> I, I think we uh, expect a lot out of our athletes, and we're going to have injuries with that. So. I think we need insurance for our athletes, but. I wouldn't be opposed to checking in them if you have the time. Yeah. I like the part there. Yeah, the philosophical part of it to me is that we get so wrapped up in this side of things when we're fundamentally here to be vigilant of our academics. <laughs> on academics. Well, how about this? There's no rush to do it today. We need to have it done before the start of school uh, uh, practices. Uh, I'll uh, get that other quote. I've got two now, and I'll have better information for him what the coverage is, and can make that decision. And we, we can compare those other policies because it, it may be that we get the same coverage from a different company for for cheaper. Um, this company's easier to work with, so. That's they've another been, thing. Is, yeah, they've been good. Yeah. yeah. That says lots of time, especially for Julianne. You know, it, it's not only for athletes, but it is like for right. PE, physical education, right. and, you mm -hmm. know, any, any classroom, mm -hmm. anytime. Any yeah, student. Any student. So I, I just think that it's good to check out other ones. But I think we'll come That's back. It's a good company. They've been, they treat the school well, but all costs go up. I would suggest seeing if you can check out some other options and bring it to us, and then um, we can go from there. I definitely think our students need it. It's just a little bit of a fringe benefit, I guess you could call it. So, it's going for students. So. All right. Next item, track maintenance. Oh, gosh. You guys look at all those pictures sent to us. Let's see if I can get you some better pictures here. Um, we kind of discussed last, uh, uh, maybe, I don't remember if we discussed it. Yeah, we did a little bit last meeting uh, and on the track and what's the situation of our track and uh, did we just get a new track? And uh, so I was able to talk to. Uh, The gentleman that's that's done the work on the track uh, for the past uh, 14 years. The track was renovated in uh, 1999. That's when the new rubberized surface was was put down. Uh, and track renovations is the name of the company. It's a latex surface. So uh, if you're looking at these, it's more of a uh, more of a sealed uh, like paint with rubber in it as opposed to rubber pellets glued together um, a little bit like that but it's a different surface uh, so when they when they seal it and keep sealing it that seals in more of the moisture it's a little bit porous and lets moisture out but uh, so here's the the maintenance that we've had um, level one two and three and I won't go over all of this but basically level one is let's seal the cracks and fix what needs to be fixed uh, they'll clean it they'll repaint lines uh, as needed, uh, touch things up. Um, and then level two would be just sealing it. They're not putting on new rubber, they're just putting another coat on to seal it and hold the rubber there, uh, and then they'll restripe uh, the lines. Level three uh, would be when they add a new rubberized surface. So you can see these levels of maintenance that have occurred and when they have occurred. I don't have the costs on them renovation and then that first level one maintenance but uh, in 2009 
the new surface was applied on top of the surface that was there in uh, 1999. So when we say uh, a few years back we got a new surface, we did, but it was on top of the existing surface, and mm -hmm. so it wasn't an entirely new, um, a new setup, I guess. So the the issues that we have are. Um, this picture is kind of hard to see what's going on there, but the lighter portion there is the first layer uh, from 1999, and then the layer on top uh, there is what was uh, done in 2009. Uh, that's right at the starting area, which you'll see the most wear uh, with the starting blocks. Uh, the main issue right now that we need to worry about are these cracks. Uh, they come in and seal the cracks. Uh, they have expanded, um, extended. There's some new cracks. And then there's cracks that run the length of it, and that's where they laid the asphalt in two pores, and where those two come together is a cold joint. And that's natural, that's not a concern. Um, and then here's an example of a crack that has been sealed and reopened. The white spots that you'll see out there is moisture coming up from underneath uh, through the asphalt, the cracks in the asphalt. It's tough to tell here, but there's, there's areas where it's bubbled. And if we lay down a new rubberized surface on top of that, that will seal even more of that moisture in, and these problems will be worse. Uh, here's an example of where they've repaired some of those bubbles. They've gone in and cut them out and repair them with this type of surface that's a little more porous and lets more of the moisture out when it evaporates out. And this, these areas have not bubbled. Is that safe to say? The areas they've repaired, they're not. And then there's another example of a spot like that. So our, our solutions, I believe, uh, and I called and checked up on this company uh, uh, with Stafford. They've used this company as well. Uh, I think they're shooting us straight. Uh, we can maintain this as long as we can with our levels of maintenance. Uh, it doesn't suggest putting a new layer on it all. That'll make things worse. What we have to worry about now is those cracks in the rubber. Those are because of cracks in the asphalt. Anytime moisture gets in there, uh, through those cracks, it's going to make that worse. So eventually, that rubberized surface needs to come off, the asphalt needs to be repaired, and then a new surface put down. Uh, so at some point, I don't think we can get away from that option too. Uh, obviously, it's not uh, uh, an indefinite life on these rubberized surfaces. So these, this surface is a polyurethane rather than latex, which doesn't uh, mean a whole lot to a lot of us, but um, this would require less maintenance. They're not going to come in every year or every two years and try to maintain it. Those are the same surfaces, only the red one has an additional layer on top of it that makes it more durable and lasts a few years longer, but it is also Fifty-five thousand dollars more to do that. Um, it looks like something that cleats would make holes in, but from parents and not. Yeah. And we could do another latex surface, uh, um, but we have the maintenance then, uh, the yearly maintenance. So well, the bubbles appeared within a week of when we spent the forty. Five thousand. Really? Yeah. They were there within a week. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, water was <coughs> oozing out it didn't in seem places like, that we had never seen water. It didn't seem like we got our money. No, we did idea. not get our money. Because, like, well, we had bubbles were there. It was a five thing. And it was right. extremely right. hot that summer. It, you know, I didn't see. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't get a lot of rain. We get it dry now. I don't know. It wasn't very good. Yeah, 
So I, this is more just information, but I, I don't know any other way around it that something's going to have to be done about it uh, within a few years. So the plan would be to try to get them out again and uh, reseal cracks and uh, uh, put that as part of our capital improvement plan to find a way to pay for it. Uh, or we just keep doing filling cracks every year and uh, hope the asphalt holds up. But, you know, you know when we did the last thing, you know, it, it was, it's not going to crack. Isn't that right? Who thought it wasn't going to crack? Okay, we host regional. Do we get any money back from that? Keep back? Yeah. What we get does that money go to? It uh, goes in athletics. I mean, it's not significant. It's Why not? <laughs> you got all that work. Well, the people, yeah, 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 we, especially when they're using. I still, yeah. I've had people ask me why we don't charge other, if a school hosts, why we don't charge them a little something for using our track and facilities. I know it's gracious to offer them to use it, but if it's going to cost us so much all the time, yeah. Might be something we need to think about. But at least you're getting some use out of it. Otherwise, it's sitting there and it's coming apart. And you're not using it. I'm just. Uh -oh, I'm just thinking that. Yeah. Or Wish if, we got or more. Or Maxfield could run their meet at uh, Kinsley instead. Well, uh, Kinsley no, I, you know, I I like to have everything yeah. open. Run it somewhere anybody. else, and then we travel. So I'm so wondering if it's nice to have it here. Bring it up that sure. people have talked I, to me about because sure. it is. I mean, when you think of the expense. Well, we're having these discussions, and other school districts that don't have a track are not having these discussions. It's it's a tough pill to swallow sometimes. I, know. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we we very well could. I mean, we could charge things. Yes, I think we need to fill our cracks. Mm -hmm. Like we just stretch yeah, our dollars as long as we can. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like we're going to have to repair the asphalt, so just get as long as we can, maybe three or four years out of it. And then the Start. price will triple. Oh. Might come up with a new product. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like they. It does come in blue right. if you're curious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Important uh, things. What is that school out well? Blue. On your turf? Boise State. Boise State. <laughs> All right. I think we're done. Okay. Budget authority motion. Uh, this is a simple one. This is a yearly deal uh, just to give um, give administration authority to make the final transfers that need to need to happen to uh, to finish out the year. Any questions on that? You guys want to have a special board meeting come back and approve it? No. no, so uh, is this take the place of the one that you sent out? No, that's different. <laughs> so. No, that's a budget here. <laughs> <Sorry>. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll see if it works. Yeah. But I would sure. like move the board to grant the administration authority to make the necessary transfers to finish up the school year. Second. They move and second to. Uh, Grant the authority to administration to make final financial transfers and adjustments uh, in the educational interests of the school district. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, any hand? Close, same sign. 4 0. Uh, with that, destruction of records now? Uh, this is something we need to have on here. Uh Every year, this will be a June board meeting item. Uh, we talked about it in January, I think. We had a bunch of records that we had sitting around that we don't have to have them. Uh, after seven years, we can dispose of them. So uh, we need the motion to dispose of those appropriate financial records from the 0405 budget year. Do you take them to a shredder or a shredder mm -hmm. come here? We have a company that comes and gets uh, our the stuff in the box, and that's how we do it. Mm -hmm. we and our financial today. records are public, open record anyway. 
I mean, they're not confidential. So anything that's confidential, we shred. It's in my turn. Mm -hmm. All right. I move the board approve the destruction of appropriate district financial records from the 0405 budget year. Second motion. We have moved second to uh, approve the destruction of appropriate district financial records for the 2004-2005 budget year. Any discussion? All in favor, right hand. Opposed, same sign. 4-0. The right hand was busy. Yeah. Here's your pants too. All right, communications, board member activities. Since you're talking, stand up here for. How long will last? Sorry. I gotta be last. All right. Barb? <laughs> oh, I can't remember that far back, but I'm sure I've attended something. But um, am I on the Cornwall scholarship still? So, is that my. You know, yes. Oh, well, I just looked today, but I think it was previous. Get ready for your meeting this summer. <coughs> Kill that. Yeah. All right. Just thought I'd check. But other than that, it was a great year. appreciate Mrs. Davis doing her job on short notice. Mrs. Steve Keats on her great year. And Mr. Meyer on his year. So. Thank you. To the PDC meeting where we talked about goals for the coming year and don't have an agenda necessarily, but um, a lot of discussion about keeping PDC consistent with district goals and I think that the teachers had good things to say, generally speaking, about some of the technology oriented sessions of the year and that's also consistent with goals and I kind of saw that as what was emerging as one of the priorities for the coming year. I don't think it may not be a full characterization of all Good. Good direction. Go before me. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Fine. Right. <coughs> gotta stand up. Yeah, I gotta stand up. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll uh, come over here. Carolyn, come here. We have an award, Distinguished <coughs> Service Award, for four years of service to USD 350, and it has been a pleasure working with you, yeah. and we will miss you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. President, mm -hmm. stand. Same thing, Distinguished <laughs> Service. In 12 years, it's only seemed like 20, 23, <laughs> but anyway, I have really appreciated working with you for my however many years I've been on, and we will miss you also. Thank you. That's all I can handle right there. Thank you. Um, I'm on the uh, South Central Special Ed Board, and hopefully the uh, negotiation has concluded and be ratified. So our next meeting, we approve it. But we finished up a week ago Wednesday with negotiations. Not rosy down there on the uh, budget, but anyway, I think we're heading in the right direction. Mainly uh, got there by reducing the numbers of. Employees. Well, there was concessions on both sides, put it that way. Um, of course, you all know that the Obamacare means that um, anybody that works more than 30 hours has to have in health insurance, and that's just a tremendous burden. Plus the fact that we've been spending more than we've been taking in the last several years, and so trying uh, with that in mind, we're uh, 
were able to get the uh, the teachers to agree to a, a, a package that had all that in mind. Uh, I don't have numbers in front of me right now, but it was uh, a little bit of give and take on both sides, and it, it, it wasn't what I would like to see. I think all teachers need uh, raises, but uh, we're just in a financial crunch. And to get in check, we have to have concessions on both sides. So. so what I hear is more the idea of freezing salaries as opposed to reduction in numbers. Is that? That's uh, part of it is there wasn't any um, uh, steps um, given to the teachers. And also the teachers down there, if you're uh, considered on, I think there's 100 certified staff. Probably mm -hmm. 100, 120. And they had to give up a little bit of their health insurance, like 5% of what's being applied. And help offset what we're having to pay for the other, so they help in turn help pay for that, so that they had to give a little bit of But we have a choice. We could have just gone away with health insurance. That's, that's an option. That wouldn't have been good. Because that's kind of a drawing card to hire people to have health insurance. Uh, and so instead of doing that, uh, a little bit of give and take on both sides. They had some other wording changes to a few things. There were some things, some silly stuff that had to do with jewelry duty. Ju whatever duty. <laughs> jury. <laughs> jury duty. And uh, I think you don't know when you're going to get called. <coughs> I think it's a civic duty to do that. People are getting docked to do that. Shouldn't have been. So we just work out some language. Just stuff like that. And in service. Uh, had some more within service, and so it was it was good, uh, good talk. It wasn't any animosity this year that we went through, and uh, all the discussion was real good. What I guess I'm getting at is a couple of inquiries or expressions of concern that I did hear related to this had to do with the idea that someone might be cut. Is what boiled down to, and you know, I kind of expressed I know that they've got a lot, of, I mean, they've got a big gap to, to make up. So, in the end, did they figure out ways to trim costs by reducing benefits? It sounds like, and and uh, well, there's both, like I said, or did they? Did we they had uh, staff there was, as well? we reduced some staff as well, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, there was like six, six eight, six or eight <laughs> people that. Some of them had to do with low numbers. Some of it was attrition. But there was four or five that we had to trim. Did they have very many voluntarily retire? Oh, there were two or three. I don't know the numbers in front of me. And you have to cut your expenses to the tune of $750,000 to get it back in check. Then you have a Another eight hundred thousand dollar expense. The health insurance. The health insurance is eight hundred thousand alone. Projected. So uh, it was very. Uh, I was pleased with the teachers. Uh, not all of them understand, but uh, it was, the one good thing is is that we did have cash reserves, of a substantial amount. Trying to keep that in check instead of keep going on about downward spiral. Of course, the districts are all picking up a little extra expenses as well to help offset that. And you never know what the federal government's going to do. Tomorrow they can say, no money's coming this way. Didn't mm -hmm. have more expenses. So I, I think the, we're heading in the right direction. I just hope that the communication lines are a little better than they've been in the past. I think that we. We've had some change in leadership down there, and I just hope that communication. And we're going to really have some change in people on that board next year. We have different leadership at the top as far as the board president and so forth, and vice president. So that'll, that'll make a big difference, too. Do you have anything to say? No, the uh, you know the expenditure reduction was in the neighborhood of five hundred thousand, and then 
the district's in, increased assessment, you know, us paying more is 250000 So it's been a little bit of everything to make that work. So. What, what, what's happening there is they're seeing what we saw a few years ago. They, they didn't have to go through that, that, those painful cuts a few years ago. Now, now they have to. So. But uh, to conclude with, I do appreciate the work that each one of you do to serve on this board, time and effort it takes to, to attend the other meetings and so forth. But, uh, I've enjoyed working with all of you. And, well, hopefully you have some free time. Now. Uh, tied up in a lot. I didn't realize how many meetings I attended every year, but a couple. So. Well. Thank you. Thank you. Administrative reports. We'll start with Andrea. Yeah, and my report is on page 64 of your packet. Um, we did a lot of fun things in May, um, various field trips and events at school. Um, it was an, an enjoyable time to see um, a culmination of a, of a year of hard work, um, students and teachers and staff. It's a neat time. Um, the ending enrollment is 156. I left those numbers up there. Um, now, of course, we're talking about next year, getting ready for the new kids coming. Um, projecting right now a kindergarten enrollment of 27, so right in line with where we were this year. Um, site Council PTO met this evening at 6. Um, we did work at the Jubilee to help raise some money and just some awareness for the playground project that we're working on. Um, didn't raise a lot of money, but again, I think talking to people, you know, getting out there, um, letting people in the community know what was going on was well worth the time and effort. Um, our PTO president is Jamie Laufer, and I really appreciate everything she's been doing. She's just fantastic. Um, we will meet again. July 1st before the board meeting, we meet upstairs in the library and of course it's open, so if you come early to this meeting and we're still meeting, stop in. Um, our next pre-K screening is July 25th. Um, several students need to be re-screened and then I do have a handful that missed that first screening that I'm working really hard to get to this screening. Um, in order to attend preschool here, students have to go through that screening. Um, so again, I'm on the phone. I'm in, I'm in nag mode. <laughs> so, um, because it's going to be a sad day when I say, no, you can't come. You need to be screened. Um, and I believe Mr. Meyer will talk more about this, but we are now planning to have four sessions of pre-K um, Mrs. Allen and Mrs. Axman will both teach a morning and afternoon session because I have, um, well, as of today, I have 51 pre-K students on the list to attend, um, which if we didn't do those four sessions, I would have to cut it off somewhere. Um, so I'm very, very pleased about that. Um, and tomorrow morning, Cindy, Tacey, and Sarah and I are going to sit down to discuss the rosters, um, get our ducks in a row for these kiddos for next year. So um, there's a lot of work to be done, but it's I feel like it's a very exciting time for our district and our kids. And um, we'll see the trickle up effects of this for years to come. So I'm just really pleased and thank you for the support of the board on this project. And Again, I'm just very pleased about that. So, questions for me? I will just add on the the pre uh, the preschool issue there with the uh, uh, additional section there. Uh, the personnel costs are going to be covered by the the cooperative. So, we had discussed that we would make up the difference of what the state reimburses for special ed teachers. We're not going to have to do that at all. So. They're going to cover the full cost there uh, as we're providing the location and the materials, and, which we do anyway. So that was good news. 
Thank you for your report and thank you for all your reports all year long, oh, keeping you. us informed. Thank you. And Carolyn and Marlon, thank you. Uh, let's go ahead, Mr. Meyer, then. Okay, uh, Mr. Bergen's report here, you have his uh, enrollment numbers. Uh, he's been working on a class schedule uh, with our personnel situation. We, it's been a difficult time uh, for him trying to figure out. Uh, he can really go ahead and make his class schedule without uh, these other decisions being made, uh, with filling our positions. And, uh, so it's still not, not complete. but. Uh, state track, we had two boys and two girls relay teams uh, go to Wichita. The girls, four by 100, uh, they were seventh. Uh, they medaled. Uh, the golf, the team was sixth. I think that was a little bit disappointing for them. I think they expected to be a little higher. Uh, Kate Kinman medaled in ninth place. So that is Mr. Berger's report there. And... Uh, For my report, um, I'll speed this up a little bit. I will uh, review the board goals um, in my Friday note. If that'll be okay with you, I'll send that to you uh, there with some other information. Our professional development, uh, Carolyn mentioned that. Uh, this is a survey, and again, I'm not going to go through all this. I'll, I'll kind of include some of these things. Um, but the survey we had uh, were just, you know, rate, how did things go this year? What were, uh, what were the opinions of, of teachers uh, with some comments? Uh, what's your opinion about the time allotted? Five was too much, three is just about right. Um, and then some comments there. That, uh, and then Two questions, two main questions we asked was, uh, what do you want as an individual teacher? What are some of your uh, needs that you need addressed? And you see the technology is high on the list. Uh, content specific things uh, was probably the highest there. Uh, and then what does the building or district need? You know, as a whole, what do we need as a group? Uh, you can see their character education high on the list and curriculum and assessments is high on the list. So we use this information to, to plan. Another question we asked is uh, on the time frame and uh, how, do you, how do you learn as a teacher? How do you uh, best get information? Uh, so again, I just wanted to touch on that briefly here and uh, get you that information as well. Uh, what we're looking at for next year um, is our ongoing professional development would be our teacher evaluation system. Um, and that will continue our technology. You can see from the teacher's input there's a lot of need there and in, uh, integrating those iPads and we're really just scratching the surface and haven't even really gotten started with that, uh, frankly. Uh, we've got a long ways to go. Our math curriculum alignment will continue with that. Uh, a couple of areas of focus would be the character education and bullying and just having make sure we have our policies in place that we're required to and uh, how we respond to those incidents and, uh, uh, and, uh, and prevent them. Uh, the other thing would be uh, school culture and, uh, and, and pride and how we, how we address those things in a, in a meaningful way, continue to develop those. But really our professional development really needs to be focused on our goals as a building and our goals set by this board and where, where the direction needs to take us. So, um, the advocacy tours, uh, KASB is touring around the state to uh, just discuss the state of our state budget and various topics in education with Common Core, uh, a lot of those things that you've heard a lot about. Um, I put a star on, the, on this on the June 19th at Great Bend. Uh, you might want to change that to the, the one in Pratt. I'll be going to the one in Pratt. I just learned this morning that we'll have our budget workshop on the 19th, so we won't be going that day. So if you'd like to go, let me know this week and I'll get us signed up. 
Uh, they'll have breakfast for us. It'll just be a half a day thing. Uh, I went last year. It's really good information. Um, so again, if, if you'd like to attend that, uh, they ask for a twenty dollar fee for that. But I'll get it signed up. KSP is a great resource for us. Uh, the summer maintenance. Uh, uh, your big projects will be the classrooms uh, with the computer lab, Mrs. Johnson's old room, and uh, moving the special ed room over uh, and getting that preschool room ready. Uh, various carpet and flooring and our, our uh, plumbing issues uh, to address those, whether that's a short fix or if it's more of a long-term uh, problem we need to address that uh, hasn't been answered yet. Uh, our additional classroom technology. Uh, so that's kind of where uh, the terrazzo floors, that's where they've been working here this week. So we want to get that done as quick as possible. Um, the board appointments, I brought a copy of this for you. And board business calendar, and you don't need that, Marla. Let me give it to you anyway. Okay. Uh, this is the list of business items for the uh, for the year, and the appointments there have starred the ones that would be uh, board of education appointments. So maybe thinking about those things rather than just springing them on you at the July meeting if something you have a particular interest in serving or kind of need everybody to do something but Merlin you have anything to add on that on the oh no I, I like this uh print out like this but like uh before each meeting it'd be nice to have a copy of this so that you could be looking ahead and say okay this is coming up or maybe as we think maybe there's something we should add to one of these months uh, it's kind of nice to look at this yearly deal <coughs> sure. to see what's going on. What's but I like to bring it up at this point so we know what's going to happen at that particular time. Right. So anyway, just heads up on that appointment. So if you have something uh, that's a particular interest, be thinking about that. Uh, the other item on here is tree maintenance. Uh, Garland Mansell had approached me about maintaining and pruning some of the trees in the library. It's not something that really occurred to me that we really need to take care of, but uh, it's going to cost about $150 for each tree uh, to take care of those. There are some that we need to take care of. There's one out there that just needs to go. And, uh, and the one over in the high school parking lot that, that just needs to, to come down and get out of the way. So uh, my plan was just to address those those needs. I didn't plan on spending the money on the pruning uh, and that maintenance yet. Uh, so just a heads up on that. Um, the meeting with 360 Energy Engineers, uh, <coughs> uh, we met with uh, Joe Hurla, and he talked us through the process of this is the energy audit and they, they come through and look at ways that we can save money and uh, uh, get some of our capital needs taken care of. Um, Carolyn, you want to share anything on what uh, from that meeting? I thought it, he presented a really reasonable um, proposal. I, you're, essential, you're paying for general contractor services but with the as you explained last meeting, it's just um, um, with the added analysis of the energy efficiency as opposed to maybe what um, other general contractors would offer. And, and uh, it's a pretty transparent system for how they are compensated. So, um, you know, we're probably going to pay for that one way or another. It's, um, you know, whether Josh's time is worth working out the minutia of that or um, having someone that is, you know, has, has a, a, 
and expertise in, in evaluating those options and being able to present them. So I, I thought it looked pretty reasonable. We um, asked him to uh, take a look at some, partly, I, I don't know, that was probably part, I, I asked him to include some uh, analysis of um, kind of options for the library air conditioning. And also, you know, there, there was a, uh, well, that's, uh, that's all I'll say. <laughs> okay. So the, the plan is he's going to come and present to this board in July and just kind of explain what's going on there. Uh, what they're going to do is come in and uh, uh, look at our facilities a little deeper, and, uh, and then they would have a presentation then uh, in the fall uh, that we'd move forward or not. And that's the point where we would decide uh, is this something we really need their services for and then they go on the clock and we we have to pay them for that but up until that point in the fall you know, we own nothing so I think either way we get some valuable input uh, the upcoming special meeting uh, Barb alluded to it earlier, uh, 7.30 a.m. on the 19th. Uh, this is to republish our budget. Again, uh, I just got word the other day uh, from the State Department of Ed they, that our special education state aid came in higher <coughs> than anticipated. Uh, so there's about 29 districts that that affects. Uh, some districts had enough budget authority or... Uh, their enrollment was lower, so their budget authority didn't go over what they had already authorized. So uh, we're in that group of 29 that has to do this. So I, I just asked the State Department, is there something we missed or should have done differently? So now you can pad your special education budget a little more uh, to hopefully avoid that, and we'll do that again next year. But then that you know, artificially inflates your general fund budget and how much you want to do that uh, is, a, is a trick. But uh, anyway, the, I guess the benefit there is that the $36 error I made on the bond and interest uh, fund, I won't get to take care of that. So I just couldn't stomach paying $50 to publish the budget for a $36 error. But we have to do it now anyway, so we'll take care of that as well. So uh, you'll see that in the paper, paper hopefully next week. Uh, well, it has to be next week. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to change our hearing date. Uh, that'll run in 10 days later. We'll have the hearing and approve that budget. Uh, so it's increasing our general fund budget. We don't really see any more money to spend out of the deal. Uh, if we have uh, additional hiring things to take care of, <coughs> we'll do that at that meeting and maybe ratify the negotiated agreement if we should be done by that time. It will be a very quick meeting. All right. Thank you. This time we need for the session. Uh, Fifteen minutes. Okay. Include uh, Andrea's start and uh, yeah, and the board members if if you're comfortable with that. Ms. Press, I'm in the board. We went into executive session to discuss additional matters and protection of privacy of the first most elected employee employer negotiations. Protect the public interest negotiating with their equitable contract with the new board members and the superintendent and Ms. Mrs. C please for fifteen minutes. Second. 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 Second.
You can say the other one. Mr. President, I move we uh, hire Angie Webb as elementary teacher. Second. We move second to uh, offer employment to Angie Webb uh, for elementary teacher. Any discussion? All in favor, right hand. Both same sign. 4 0. I uh, also need a motion to hire Mirna Sanchez as a custodian. Mr. President, I so move. <laughs> Mirna Sanchez. Mirna Sanchez. Second. We move second to hire Mirna Sanchez as a custodian. Any discussion? All in favor, right hand. 4 0. And uh, I need a motion to hire Tacey Axman as junior high assistant volleyball coach. Mr. President, we hire Tacey Axman as the assistant volleyball coach? I got that. I'll second that, and then I have discussion. Can Barb vote on this? Yes, she can. She can? Yes, she can. All right. I was just wondering if that was... Been moving second to hire Tacey Axman. That's why I said we got to wait a month. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. 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 I just thought that. It might be better. To wait a month? What yes. they're all about. Oh, all right. That way there's no conflict of interest in it. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I withdraw the motion. Okay. Noting yeah. that all right. there hasn't we'll been any competition. Yeah, I just, I just <laughs> want to avoid any conflict of interest there. Right. Sure. Thanks for bringing it yeah. Anything else? Uh, no. No. Um, just remember our special meeting. Special. Mr. Sir, yes. Are we not? Are we not um, hiring Tacey at this time? Then? No. Table. Is it, uh, table. No, it's not table. They're, 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 they're I should probably fully say that I moved to table the motion. No. Uh, table. You can withdraw your motion. But I just didn't hear the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, we're, we're just not voting on it. Yeah, we're going to wait until next month. Yeah, just, just a reminder about special meeting on the uh, 19th. You can do it then. Yeah, yeah. Two won't be here for sure. On oh, the 19th. You can't vote then. Yeah. Well, it's all right. We can we can do it in July if we need to. Okay. No, no. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. President, I move we adjourn. Second. Good move and second to adjourn. All in favor, please.